All the work that Verts and Wilmore are doing on their spacewalk tomorrow is getting the station ready for new hardware, two international docking adapters uh, called IDAs that will be installed on station docking ports so that future commercial vehicles can dock to the space station. The adapters were manufactured at, Boeing, at a Boeing facility near uh, Johnson Space Center, and recently my colleague Kyle Herring visited the facility to talk about the hardware with Sean Kelly, NASA's senior project manager for the rele relocation and international docking adapters. And Kyle asked Sean why we need these adapters. So the international docking adapter is actually the first uh, implementation of our international docking system standard. We've developed that over the past few years with all our international partners. So it's really the first standard that we have in the spaceflight business. And as such, we wanted to lead, lead the way. And NASA established an effort to develop the international docking adapter. Uh, we try to put the emphasis on international because although it's in the critical path for commercial crew, this is also a key element for what we plan for other international partners to come to the space station and start utilizing it in the future. Well, we know we've got some critical spacewalks that have to be done ahead of the uh, arrival of the first IDA. Uh, in your title is the word relocation. Of course, there's a lot that has to happen associated with the spacewalks and, of course, relocation. Talk about the relocation phase that, that has to happen, basically the setup, before you actually get to the point of delivering the, uh, the IDA. So we're... Uh Establishing two international docking ports, one is on Node 2 Forward, the other one is on Node 2 Zenith, and that's to allow uh, for the traffic models that we have for the space station, multiple visiting vehicles, and they'll even support two visiting vehicles at the same time. Uh, commercial crew, commercial cargo, international partners, we're in a good position to support the various traffic models that we have planned. As part of that, though, we have to also allow for berthing. And today we have two berthing ports. We want to maintain that capability to have two berthing ports on the space station. So we want to, uh, in order to do that, we have to move some elements around. So one of the elements we've got to move is the existing PMA, uh, pressurized mating adapter. That, uh, the, we had two of those for spit to support space shuttle. We'll have two of those as the basis on which to put the international docking adapters. Uh, but we have to move one of the PMAs, uh, PMA3. We also have to move the uh, PMM, uh, Pressurized Multipurpose Module, uh, from its current location uh, in order to get the clearances and, and approach corridors that we want for the visiting vehicles. This entails a tremendous amount of relocation. This is the uh, uh, largest uh, project we've done, certainly since the end of the shuttle program. Uh, it spans three increments, five EVAs, um, about 800 hours of internal crew time to configure the station. So it's a, a very exciting project to, to do, and we're really setting the uh, gateway for the future for commercial crew and, and other international partners to come to the space station. One of the reasons that we're here, actually, is we are in Boeing's facility down the road, the Houston Product Support Center. Boeing, obviously, uh, a contractor to build these, but it's a, it, it's a multi-contractor partnership because uh, not only is Boeing building this, but it's going to be launched on a uh, SpaceX uh, uh, Falcon 9 aboard a Dragon in the future. Um, uh, the first IDA is already at the Kennedy Space Center, the first flight unit. This one is the uh, flight unit number two. Um, you've been part of this for quite a while. Talk about that, that partnership uh, between not only NASA and Boeing, but also uh, the SpaceX component of this to get this uh, project completed. So this has been a, the International Docking Adapter Project has been uh, uh, involved numerous contractors. Uh, we've had our prime contractor, Boeing, as the lead integration contractor for it. But they've used numerous contractors across the United States. I believe, uh, at last count, we were drawing products from uh, 25 or 28 states. So it's, it really is a large collaborative effort. We also get uh, major components, the uh, primary structure, from um, Russia, from Energia, and that has uh, been very uh, beneficial to the schedule and also to the international collaboration aspect of, of the international docking adapter. And of course, we're flying it on, on SpaceX. So taking something new, flying it on a, uh, from a Boeing prime contractor, international components on it, 
uh, multiple components from across the United States and flying it in a commercial cargo vehicle to the space station. It's all uh, been very rewarding and very interesting and really brought in a lot of elements from uh, across the uh, agency to try and make this happen. As, as I mentioned, we're in the HPSC um, and what we're standing next to is this, the flight unit number two. Um, where we're standing, you can see the size comparison, but talk us through just a little bit about this unit and uh, how big it is and, and uh, size-wise and, and weight-wise that, that's being delivered to the station. So this is international docking adapter number two. This is serial number two. Uh, the first unit's down at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, we will fly this up on a, on a Dragon. This will go up on uh, SpaceX 9 is the current schedule for that. And uh, as you can see, it has EVA handrails all around it so that it can aid the installation for the crew. Uh, we also mount it in the, in the trunk for, dra or for Dragon uh, by trunnion pins. So we have these trunnion pins, and that allows us to have a very secure mount. The Ida actually will hang suspended under Dragon as it's going uphill, and then it'll be extracted from the trunk. Uh, it weighs about uh, 1,150 pounds. It's, as you can see, it's roughly 30 inches from base to top. On the very bottom, it has a ceiling surface, and that's what will go on to the PMA. It has guide pedals that allow it to be accurately installed. We're going to have uh, robotic extraction from the Dragon trunk, and that the spitum will bring the Ida to about 2 feet, 10 inches within uh, the PMA and then the crew will reach out, they'll grab it, they'll put some tether straps on it, then they'll bring that down manually. It'll be released by the robotics. It'll be manually brought down by the crew onto the PMA, which point it'll be closed, and then we'll use some of these connectors on this panel, and some uh, internal crew members will flip some switches, drive some hook motors, and then it'll be fully installed on, onto the PMA uh, for permanent use. The crew that's actually going to do the manual part of this installation is uh, uh, Scott Kelly obviously is uh, one of those crew members going up for a year and uh, as recently as uh, probably January even maybe earlier this month he was looking at these down at the Cape and and looking at what he's going to do on orbit based on what you just said right so we've had Scott Kelly out here to look at the hardware no not, not only Ida 1 but also Ida 2 uh, he's seen the seen it during the build-up process, so he gets to see some of the internal workings of it. Uh, we've made sure that uh, all the crew members that are potential candidates for installing it um, have had the opportunity to see it and get familiar with the hardware. Um, this is 1,150 pounds, so it's, it's not trivial. Even though it's weightless in, in orbit, it's still uh, a, a big heavy object for them to move around from a mass point of view in orbit. So we wanted to make sure they were fully familiar with it before they flew. And I believe Scott Kelly's going to have the opportunity to install both Ida-1 and Ida-2 uh, on orbit. We're in the space vehicle mock-up facility, the location for the uh, mock-ups that you see associated with the international docking adapter. Sean and I are here to, uh, uh, for Sean to give us a little demonstration of what actually will happen on orbit and what these mock-ups are used for in terms of training to get crews ready to uh, head to orbit. So, Sean. Uh, give us a little uh, demo here of what we're looking at and uh, the importance of it to, to the uh, international docking sure. adapter in the future of the uh, commercial crew and other visiting vehicles. Sure. So uh, what we have here is the international docking adapter. Uh, as you saw in the previous video, it has three pedals. It's also mounted on the pressurized mating adapter, which is the back portion of this mock-up. The crew uses this mock-up for ingress and egress training as well as familiarization training for it. As you can see, it's not highly detailed, but it's an adequate level of detail for all the training operations that they have in the facility. What we have behind me is the active docking system. This represents what would be on the front of the visiting vehicle, a commercial crew vehicle or other international partner vehicle. This also has three pedals on it, as well as mechanical latches. These latches will strike over to the Ida on their striker plates, and that's how the the attachment of the visiting vehicle to the Ida will happen. Uh, that normally happens with a soft capture system extended, and then that soft capture system retracts, thereby making the two uh, halves of the docking system go together and mate. That creates a pressurized seal and a structural seal between the two of them. The crew training aspect of this, uh, we, we uh, 
They obviously work with the actual flight hardware, uh, but they also have to interface with this training equipment and, and uh, describe that for us. It's really more of a ingress and egress type function for the crew members rather than the functionality of the, the actual system, right? Correct. So uh, when a visiting vehicle comes, there's a lot of reconfiguration you have to do on the space station. Uh, you've got power and data exchange that happens automatically as part of the docking adapter. But there's also air exchange that has to happen. They have to put in some duct work, and uh, that's to al allow air exchange between the visiting vehicle and the space station once it's docked. And so they have to do that configuration as well as uh, there's a uh, existing target that they use for docking on the front of the hatch. And once that hatch is open, they have to remove that docking target from the hatch so they can egress into the vehicle smoothly. Well, Sean, we really do appreciate you taking time out to show us this hardware that's uh, headed for the International Space Station, the International Docking Adapter, both of them uh, obviously getting ready to fly, and, and we really appreciate you taking the time out to show us the hardware today. Thank you for the opportunity.